let me get this straight. You put the warrior novium in the thumbnail, and then the first thing you say is that they didn't provide a stick, so you didn't put it in the mid-kick battle. Go buy it! So I generally don't really do a reaction video and you know the one thing I don't want to do is start taking YouTube clips and get copyright strikes and I know there's a lot of people that do that but I'm watching the latest hockey tutorship video and I just got to say that the transparency here is pretty hilarious because they just say that they're doing a mid kick video they get all the sticks provided to them and then they go through and do this mid-kick testing, testing for three minutes on the ice and then decide to rank the sticks and contradict everything they've said in various videos and give really zero explanation. And then to make it all worse, they have a Warrior Novium in the thumbnail. Why don't you have it? Like, I just don't understand. And then you say that Warrior didn't provide it. Go out and buy it for your fans, your 176,000 followers that I'm sure you can afford one $400 stick and put it in the video instead of looking like complete, ugh, oh God. Right, what's going on everybody? So we're ranking sticks today. We've got Pro Stock Hockey. We've got Trigger 7 Pro. We've got Warrior Novium. We got LX Pro. So first one, is the LX Pro. This shoots amazing. Great white, great puck feel, amazing stick. One of the best sticks I've ever used. It's fourth. We've got the Warrior Novium that I didn't even have in the video, but it's on the thumbnail. So that's why it's third. Ooh, Trigger 7 Pro Stock. Well, we all know that wood isn't very good. So because this is a wood stick, oh, it, oh, it looks like wood. Still, the wood stick, no. So that leaves me with the Trigger. And the reason that I like the Trigger so much is because the other sticks are so bad. What's going on, you guys? Justin, a.k.a. Boomer Beer League Bum Hockey Reviews. And, you know, I used to like Hockey Tutorial, but the more I watch their stuff, the more I cringe because it just goes to show that these guys have no bloody idea what they're doing. They're not providing any information for you guys. They're just not helping. So I'm going to go through each one of these and do a little bit of a reaction and just give my thoughts on it. And I'm going to keep it to pictures because, honestly, I don't really feel like editing a whole bunch of stuff right now. But here we go. All right, we'll start with the FT5 Pro. Tommy begins to start by saying that he put the number five as the FT5 Pro because it's not a great all-round stick. And then he continued to tell you that it's got a great shot, it's got a great release, it's got great grip, it feels great, you can stick handle with it, you can shoot well, you can stick handle, you can break the goal, you can do all this stuff. Which is it, Tommy? At the end of the day, if it's not a good stick, explain why. His one reason, you can't slap shot with it. It's one of the hardest shooting sticks out there. So. Either you can't slap shot, or you never slap shot, or you don't know how, period. Look, don't get me wrong here, guys, is you have to rank the sticks. But the problem is, is that each individual stick, if you use it for a long amount of time like I do, you realize how the stick actually performs in relation to others, and the nuances of each stick will allow you to properly educate others on all the features of the stick. Going into the ASB Pro, he says it's built for slap shots, and you know, big snapshots, you know, one timers, etc. It's a soft loading stick. It's very slow, so he gets that correct. But the stick is actually engineered differently than the old AS4 Pro, and this stick is far more versatile now. So you can still shoot well with a big one timer and slap shots, but it's nowhere near where the old AS4 Pro used to be. If you had back-to-back -back comparisons and actually used the stick for a long amount of time, you would realize that other sticks. TMP, FT5, they shoot harder with slap shots because of the hyper kick and allowing just a better load. So the ASV is a great overall stick, but you're just wrong again here, Tommy. So now we got the Sherwood at, you know, number three. And the Sherwood was basically the stick release of 2022. The thing is insane. It's versatile all around. It's durable. 
It has a great puck feel. It can shoot in all shots. Go watch my TMP vid. I get most people telling me that I shoot rockets over everything else with that stick. And at the end of the day, the only thing bothering him is that's a square shaft, and he says the Wrecker is better for that. Did you realize that the Wrecker and the TMP Pro have pretty much the same shaft dimensions? That's how Sherwood operates? Yeah, I didn't think so. So then we got the sink with the great blade feel, one of the best kind of puck feeling sticks there is. Overall shooting is kind of in that mid-range. It's no better or no worse than really anything else. But of course you have the five-sided shaft. And unfortunately, so many people DM me all the time and they say, I wish I watched your sync video and actually listened to saying you either love it or hate it with the shaft. Because the shaft is exactly that. I, I hate it. I cannot keep that in my hand at all. It just rotates around all the time. So you're going to tell everybody that this stick is excellent without touching on how the shaft is very subjective. People are going to run out and go get a sink, and then they're going to be like, you didn't touch on the shaft of how crappy this actually is. It's very challenging. Look, some people like the shaft. I get it. But you should probably touch on it because it's a huge caveat for putting the stick number two and it having a completely different shaft geometry. And then finally, we have actually one of the worst stick releases in the last little while for a number of reasons, uh, the Catalyst PX. First is durability. Any true stick right now breaks very, very quickly. And we're not talking just like, you know, use three or four months down the road. We're talking one month after, you know, warranty type thing. The PX's blade also feels like it's chopped wood. It is terrible. The way that it releases the puck and feels is just bizarre. It sounds broken all the time. And it was one of the first things I noticed and I could not get over it. It just made stick handling and shooting and just puck feel was just bizarre. It just did not work. And every person that I talked to that actually has run a PX before, it's the first thing they say is that, yeah, you're right. This blade is just bizarre. I cannot get used to it. I don't like it. And you add the durability into that, and it's just a regular true stick with durability issues. So you should probably touch on that, but wait, you wouldn't know that because you've used that for three minutes, and that's it. Well, guys, that was nine and a half minutes of uh, absolute talking contradiction, where I could just see that you guys had no idea what you were actually trying to accomplish, and you did it on the fly. And you know how I know that? Because I think you go to the rink, and you film 17 different videos, and you cram it all in there. You get no actual testing. You have no actual long-term feedback that provides actual information to your fans and your subs, a whole 880,000 of them. And what exactly are you doing here? All you're doing is getting fucking free shit from everybody. You're posting BS and fluff. So at the end of the day, I'm reacting to it because guys, honestly, what are you doing out there? Thanks guys. Really bum. Out. Wait, 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 wait. So this isn't wood? Can I redo my rankings?